The HTTP status code refers to the unique code that is written by the server for every HTTP request. These status codes are going to show us the final result of the HTTP request that has been made, whether the request has succeeded or failed. Choosing the right status code is very important when you are designing and implementing the API operations. This table summarizes the main categories of HTTP status codes. They are also called classes. They are categorized according to the type of HTTP status code they are going to return. For example, the first class, namely 1xx, which is shortly referred to as the series that starts with 1, is primarily for informational status codes. This class is predominantly used for informational status codes. Next, the 2xx class is used to denote the success scenarios. In this case, we are going to mention from the server to the client that the request was successfully received and executed. The 3xx class is mostly for the redirection use cases. The 4xx class is used to capture the client-side errors when the client sends a request. Finally, the 5xx class is used to capture the server-side errors and signify to the client that these errors had happened at the server side. Let's look at each of these classes and their commonly used HTTP status codes. First, we have the 2xx class that is used to capture the successful status codes. In this case, the 200 OK is used to signify to the client that the request has been successfully received and processed at the server. The 200 OK is the most frequently used status code among all the status codes. Next, if the server has created a new resource at its site, then it can return the 201 created status code. Lastly, the 204 no content is used whenever the server wants to signify to the client that the request has succeeded and there is no response body for it. The next set of classes is 4xx, which is used to represent the client-side error status codes. Among these, the following are the most important ones that you need to remember when you are designing and implementing for the client-side errors. The first one, namely 400 bad request, is the most frequent one among these 4xx series. This is used to convey that the client has sent the request with details that are not expected on the server side. Maybe the parameters are not correct or it is in the incorrect format. In case the client is not authorized, then the server can return 401 unauthorized code. Next, the 403 forbidden status code is thrown by the server when the client cannot access this resource. The infamous 404 not found is used to signify to the client that the specified URL is not implemented on the server side. Finally, the 405 method not allowed is used to represent that the method that is being requested by the client, namely get, post, put or delete is not allowed for this specific client. Finally, we have the 5xx class that is used to capture the server side error codes. It is possible that sometimes some error happens on the server side as well. For instance, if there are some exceptions handled on the server side, then the server can return the error code 500 internal server error. This is the most common error returned from the server whenever there is an unknown error or unspecified error occurred at its end. In case there are some models that are not implemented at the server side and the client has requested for it, then the server can throw 501 not implemented error code. In short, any error in the 500 series signifies that it's a problem with the server, whereas any status code in the 400 series signifies a problem on the client side.